Um, I'll be very glad if you keep your mics on and uh, interrupt whenever you want. I have no problems with that. Actually, I prefer I can see that at least there's someone's uh, uh, over there listening to me and not uh, you no know, reading in there or whatever. Uh, anyway, uh, so this talk, uh, I'm going to present. Uh, uh, officially, the name is quantitative logic reasoning, but when I say that, people don't understand. So it's basically mixing logic and numbers. Okay, so the motivation I'll, I'll present three uh, three uh, lines of of research. We are doing classical probabilistic with classical logic examples. I'll do classical reasoning with counting, so cardinalities, and I'll be also doing with some uh, non classical logic, fuzzy logic, and a well founded probability theory. On top of it, uh, I'll be using uh, Lukashevich infinitely valued logic on, on top of that. So all of this is officially called quantitative logic reasoning. We're doing logic reasoning on top or side by side, actually, with the uh, uh, qu quantitative uh, uh, elements. OK, and I'll present a joint view that can deal with all these three uh, different uh, sorts of, of things, there is a joint view, a, a joint set of tools that we can use to deal with all of them. And I'll describe uh, some, some conclusions on going work and future work. And, uh, and also, uh, uh, if you're more interested in one of these, I brought some, some, uh, some more slides on on deeper view on probabilistic reasoning. Of course, I won't be able to show all the problems here. Oops, uh, all the the wish all the all the the theorems and all everything is going on. This is more a presentation of our research program. So I'll start with the motivation. And sorry, I I, I spoiled my joke. So what you're not talking about? machine learning. So basically everything these days in computer science seems to be about machine learning and this talk is not. But I can use the, the faint excuse that machine learning needs or will need knowledge representation. I'm not sure if this is the kind of knowledge representation machine learning uh, uh, is in need of. I have work now on machine learning. I have, I'm in developing, I'm in the middle of some uh, effort in Brazil uh, to even to to employ machine learning techniques to COVID, to the selection of patients that should go to hospital and those who should stay at home, uh, just by voice analysis. But I'm not talking about this now. Uh, maybe if, in later, if you ask me. Uh, and uh, well, so this is not about machine learning. This is just a normal joke. So what this talk is about? So the grand plan, what well, the research plan is to combine logic with numbers. So say say logic reasoning. This is the uh, uh, a, a a presentation of an induction axiom, and if you know about it in computational terms, this is very complex. And with uh, quantitative reasoning, and this is a very simple equation called the Schrodinger's equation, and it's very hard to solve it anyway. So, is are you crazy enough to 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 combine? Uh, a, a complex logical thing with an impossible uh, and a, a quantitative uh, equation and try to reason between of them? Well, no. Well, we want to do things in a principled way, but what we mean, well, we're more modest in that we want to be able to at least tackle the issues here computationally and not go as high as combining uh, undecidable no, no, uh, very hard and almost undecidable logic formulation with impossible quantitative formulations. We want to do it uh, in a more well-behaved way. So what exactly do I mean by a well-behaved way? Well, I'll, go, I'll show you some examples now, okay? So here we have three friends in a bar. So the, the, the problem here is, well, uh, the bartender, uh, comes every night and he says, well, there is, they have these three tables, these three friends, and every night at least two of them are at the table, okay? So the bar, barman makes a statement like that. And then you, if you go and talk to this very nice gentleman, very, very talking, very friendly gentleman, they, each of them says, no, 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 I come here only 60% of the nights. The rest of the nights I stay at home with my missus, my wife, we watch, you know, soap opera, whatever. Uh, and uh, and the question is, can they all be telling the truth? 
or not. Okay, uh, so this is one way of combining a logical statement that at least two out of three of them is are present every nine, which each, each then will say, oh no, only 60% of there you see a probability or at least some number in here. Can they all be saying the truth? Does there exist a model for the situation? And well, this is very, very, um, very, um, not, it's not very serious presentation of the problem. So let's move, let's go more serious, okay? Now, when I did this, this example, we, we weren't uh, dealing with a pandemic, but uh, here we have a doctor that investigating uh, uh, the causes of a disease and then and, and she ha has the, the theory that, uh, well, she's investigating three genes and she, she proposes that at least uh, two of them must be active for the disease to manifest itself, to, to develop. So have three genes, G1, G2, and G3. And uh, the, the hypothesis here is uh, at least two of them uh, must, be, uh, must be active. Two of these three genes must be active for the disease to, to, to manifest. And we have, this is the, the logical hypothesis, and we have the data. We go to the population and we know that each of the, the, the patients, 60% uh, of the patient, patients have uh, G1 active, 60% of, of the patients has gene G2 active and 60% have gene G3 active. So can this hypothesis, is this a hypothesis consistent with the data? Uh, uh, so this is a very more serious problem. And, but if you think about it, the, the two of them are the same problem I and mean, they have exactly the same mathematical formulation. And the answer is the same for both of them. And this uh, no, the hypothesis is false and uh, the, the, the people there are a bunch of liars. But anyway, uh, that's, well, how do we know that? How, how, how can we compute that? How can we uh, uh, get to that conclusion in a principled way? So um, here we can see, well, if, at least two of them must be present. At least some gene must be must must be present in two thirds of uh, 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 one. At least one gene must be uh, uh, active two thirds of the time. And, and since none of them are, are active two thirds of the time, so this is false. This is a kind of a, an informal reason we we need to to show that this is actually. Uh, the, 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 the hypothesis is actually inconsistent with the, with the data. So how do we do that? Well, let's change subject completely. Well, you, uh, sorry, not, not saying change. That's the, let me tell you about this idea. This probabilistic logic is a zombie idea. Well, this is a hypothesis. The probabilistic logic was proposed by George Bull in his 1854 a book on the laws of of thought, uh, and uh, if you go there and you if you see that book, it, which is available in, in Gutenberg uh, project, the last two chapters, uh, the, the the book is all all about uh, Boolean logic. But the last two chapters is how to combine Boolean logic with probabilities, and and if you read it, well, one of the problems that he he has is actually uh, this kind of problem attributing probabilities to, to a Boolean formula or Boolean uh, equations, if you want, and see if they are consistent. So it, it was there. And then, the, well, he didn't have good tools to work with that. Uh, the tools that he had at, at his disposal at, at the time, if you look at them today with the, with the complexity, com computational complexity uh, view, you see they are double exponential. So if you have four variables, you need what? Uh, it's uh, the 16,000 uh, steps to solve the problem. It's not a very useful tool. So that's why it died. And, and, and then, you know, you probably must have heard about the Finetti. In, uh, famous probabilist. He, in his uh, 1934 book, also has something that looks like uh, a proposal to solve this problem. And well, Definet in 34 wasn't discovered. He was he, he wasn't very uh, outside Italy, at least. Well, when the the, the, the Savage and, and his people uh, started developing a Bayesian approach, the the uh, then they found out that all that he has done. Then he went to the states, presented his his ideas, um, at least the, his book was, was translated 
in 74, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but before that, some other statisticians uh, in the States have proposed the same idea and the idea died again and then all over again until in 1986, the same idea was kind of born again uh, into the AI community, the, the, the probabilistic logic. Uh, and then people have been studying all these works, including Bull's works. Uh, uh, Halperin was working, uh, studying uh, works. And uh, when Nielsen proposed uh, probabilistic logic native fix, uh, I think Halperin was very angry at him. Well, you, you don't read the literature. Well, we have been talking about this for uh, more than a century. And now you, you come and propose this idea as, as something new. So. So Halperin revisited his point of view and, and he retracted most of it, say, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I should have read the literature anyway. This is all so complex and it's impossible to, to deal with it. With it. And there, so the, the idea died again. But then, and, and people were, were studying this uh, uh, probabilistic logic also from a point of view of of linear algebra and uh, linear algebra is not good for logic and same thing that logic is not good for linear algebra. So it kind of wasn't very efficient. So, but is this a zombie idea that's gonna die again? And my, 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 my position is here is quite different. We are having, I seen a wild flower that uh, awaits for special conditions to, to blossom. So, and the special conditions for probabilistic logic is actually to have very good linear algebraic optimization tools with very well-developed uh, SAT-based techniques. And when you put the two of them together and not separately, then you have the, the good conditions for, uh, for us to solve in practice uh, uh, probabilistic logic. So I, I want to show you why, okay? So satisfiability is kind of a very basic uh, uh, point in, in computer science, both theoretically and practically. So it was the first NP complete problem and has received a lot of attention. And uh, well, nowadays we have very efficient implementations. Uh, people used to think that this is an exponential problem, but the most of the problems are simple. And uh, I have solved in this computer uh, in, in less than an hour, a problem that, that has more than 9 million variables. I mean, could you imagine 2 to 9 million is more than the number of particles in the universe, a lot more than the number of estimated particles in the universe. So SAT has become a kind of assembly language for, uh, for uh, uh, NP-hard problems. So if you have an NP problem, the first thing you do, you compile into SAT, use one of these SAT solvers and try to solve it. Sometimes it's not a good idea like in this case, but anyway. Uh, so it has many applications and SAT is logic. Oh, it's basically logic. Uh, and uh, probabilistic SAT has not enjoyed such a notoriety. So, well, we actually, probabilistic logic we're gonna see is also an NP-complete problem, but SAT is simpler. So well, wait, 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 Marcelo. You say that they're both NP-complete, and but one is simpler than the other. Yes, precisely. Yes, uh, because the SAT class has internal structure and we kind of just revealing it when, when we do this, but more, more about this later. Uh, uh, so let's change subject now, totally completely talk about com people's hobbies. We, we're talking about uh, SAT and probabilities. Now, now let's talk about the quantified logic. So we have uh, uh, counting quantifiers. Here we have an example that at the most 15 people are astronomers, ball players, choir singers, and dancers, just for the A, B, C, and D. And we know that at least 12 astronomers are not dancers, and at least 10 astronomers play ball or sing, and of course, all ball players dance. And from this, we can immediately deduce that at least seven astronomers sing in a choir. Isn't that obvious? Well, for me, it isn't at all obvious, and it, fact that at least six, seven astronomers sing in a choir, but six, but the, you, if you say at least six astronomers sing in a choir, it doesn't follow from the premises. Oh God, this is very complicated. How do you do that? And uh, funny enough, it's very similar to the probabilistic reasoning, uh, not on the surface, but below the surface, what's going on is more or less the same thing. We can uh, reason about this, these two things, uh, uh, in using the same machinery, it turns out that 
dealing with the with the quantities is actually more complex there it's also np complete but within the, the class of np this seems to be more more complex the other one uses uh, linear algebra here we use integer linear algebra which is intrinsically more complex so uh, even though we are within the same complexity class this kind of problems is more baffling like who would immediately say at, at least seven astronomers sing in a choir uh, even though this is uh, true. Uh, so this is a, another problem uh, that we, it is within our research program. At, in the beginning, we didn't know it was the same problem. It was just by investigating the kind of things with uh, the, the, the machinery. Which we, I had the idea, whoa, well, it's we can apply the same basic machinery to solve the two kinds of problems. And then I came in contact with the Daniele Mundici, which you might have heard of in, in, in Milan. Uh, and uh, and he proposed me a uh, probabilistic uh, multivalued uh, logics. Uh, and uh, well, then I, I noticed that when you have partial truth, like in, in uh, Lukashev's infinite divided logic, the, 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 the three drunk liars, they are not liars anymore. So classically, these guys are a bunch of liars. But if you allow them to tell partial truths, uh, then they, they are, it's consistent uh, that they come 60% of the time and they only, uh, uh, every night, at least two of them are present. Uh, and, uh, well, we have to interpret that. We need to give, it's not, uh, we're not in, in, in the domain where we have only truth and falsity. We have a continuum or at least a gradation of, of, of truth uh partial truth so we could if we could think that uh uh suppose we they come to the bar to watch a football match and uh so in one of them comes to watch the first half and the other one comes in the second half uh in Lukashevich logic uh the, the truth that the, this guy came to, to to the bar to the bar is is not uh true or false but it's it's uh it has a truth value 0.5 and this other one also has truth value 0.5 and you add up, they add up to one. So it's true that uh, two of them came to the bar that night. They might not have been there at the same time at all, but uh, what they are saying becomes true. And then we, we can have an uh, uh, interesting distribution of possible worlds with the, with, the, with the probabilities to each of these possible worlds. And they are saying the, the truth so what they say is consistent there is a model for uh each of them being there uh at least two of them being there every night and each of them coming only 60 percent of the night so if you change the the underlying logic what was false beforehand now it's it's kind of consistent uh and we use Lukashevich uh, if it's devalued logic because this is a logic with a very uh, well-founded, well-developed probability theory. Uh, and we use that theory and the results of that theory. And uh, there is also a, a notion of coherence for this kind of probabilistic uh, non-classical logic in very similar ways that, that, that there are definite, definite uh, uh, coherence uh, uh, notion for classical logic based on Dutch books. And here we also have a, a, a kind of Dutch book and the same kind of, of well-founded formulation of probability in, in L infinity. And we can compute that. And, it's, and I, it's, it's funny that the same example that I had beforehand, uh, one, it was false classically, but if you bend the truth values to, to allow to be, well, half true, then it's, uh, uh, it's consistent. So politicians love this because, well, they, they may be caught saying something false and now you just change the underlying logic and then what they say may be true again. Well, uh, I'm, I'm not doing this for, for politicians' sake anyway. Well, that, well, let me go on. So, well, but again, the same machinery that applied in the previous two cases can be applied here in more or less the same way, okay? So all of this together, I called quantitative logic reasoning, quantitative logic reasoning, combining logic reasoning with quantities, 
okay? So we've been dealing here with probabilistic logic reasoning in the proposition, propositional case. So also with reasoning over counting quantifiers, I didn't tell you, but there is a, a syntactic restriction. The, the formulas uh, over which we have the counting quantifiers here have only unary predicates. So they are unary in order to keep it NP uh, complete. Uh, otherwise the, the complexity grows up very quickly. Uh, if we if we add at least one binary uh, or one binary relationship, the, the complexity becomes an X space, so non-deterministic exponential space uh, complete. Uh, uh, and uh, well, I never heard of that class beforehand. But if you look at the at the formalism that we have, it's obviously an X space. I mean, well, what else do you, would you expect? But anyway, but forget, we, 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 here we only deal with unary quantifiers, so we remain in, in NP. Uh, as you see, I'm very worried about complexity. Uh, keep it kind of under control. And the same thing for Lukashevich uh, infinitely value probabilistic reasoning over uh, uh, its uh, uh, propositional version of Lukashevich infinitely valued uh, logic. And uh, they are NP complete problems. They and and we can deal with all of these uh, problems more or less with the same machinery and that's uh, i i insist over decently behaved fragments so we at least we can implement and and do experiments and and show that they have uh uh a kind of expected behavior uh, I'll, I'll be talking about this later. And uh, there are many more logic that we can do with this framework. This is just, once we have done to a few of them, wow, can bring bring any any logic that you like. Uh, there's nothing special about Lukashevich infinitely valued logic, except that this has a well-behaved, uh, a well-founded probabilistic theory. So we have well-founded probabilistic reasoning, which can be done for other uh, multivalued logics. Well, you're welcome you can use your this uh, machinery okay so why put all this logic together they have similar reasoning tasks with quantities similar methods based on linear algebra similar decision algorithms sat based column generation column generation is in the so we use sat to generate columns for linear algebra so there is a, a an exchange between well i need i am a linear algebra i don't i don't represent all the columns of my matrix my matrix is very large so i don't represent it's exponentially large or infinite even. Uh, I don't represent all of them. And whenever I need a column, I ask my SAT solver to show me, bring me a column. So this is how the two of them talk together. Uh, and basically that's it. Uh, and then we use uh, linear algebra on the outside and logic in the inside uh, to solve these problems. Uh, and uh, for those fragments I mentioned, they have similarly similar complexity decision problems, but quantity quantifier and Lukashevich uh, probabilistic SAT are more complex than PSAT, even though they are all NP complete. Uh, and SAT is even simpler than that. So there is a hierarchy of complexity within the, the NP uh, class. Uh, so these problems are, uh, they, there is a, a building up of complexity. Uh, even within the NP complete uh, class. So, and now I will present the joint view. How do we deal? Is it, uh, is, is that okay? Are you following it? it and am I being too too fast, too slow? Because now I'm going to to give a, a bird's eye view of the how do we deal with these three logics, so three different problems at the same time. Is that okay? Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yes, it's okay. Thanks, Marcelo. Good. So now I'm 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 going to be more formal. Sorry. Oh, well, inev inevitably. So we have three logics. I'll show you what a problem is. A PSAT instance is you have a probabilistic formula phi one, and you attribute a probability to to that, and we have a set of those a k. Uh, K formulas with probabilities, and this is a PSAT instance. And the question is, do we have a model for all these uh, statements or not? So are these statements satisfiable? And uh, what do I mean by that? I mean, well, I, I have a set of possible worlds and 
uh, I have a probability distribution of the, the set of possible worlds. Of course, the, the, if you have uh, for, formulas with uh, n variables, this is uh, an exponential number of possible worlds I have of these variables. But do I have a set of possible worlds and a probability distribution on top of the set of possible worlds such that, well, the, if we add up all the possible worlds that satisfy phi one, this is p one, and all this, and so on and so forth. So all the set of uh, of, of possible worlds that satisfy phi k, if you look at the probability attributed to them, they add up to p k. So this is what I mean. I want to jointly satisfy all these uh, all these formulas with. Uh, a single probability attribution to a set of possible worlds. So it's an exponential model, if you wish. Here, uh, over unary predicates, I have cardinality of sets. These sets are defined by unary predicates. So we have, we can have, uh, uh, we can have uh, Boolean uh, Connectives connecting the formulas, uh, like uh, have uh, 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 p of x imply q of x. So it's all a single variable. They are all unary predicates. And I want that the set of the p of x's that implies q of x's has cardinality c1. So I want a model for all these predicates such that the, all the cardinalities constraints that I place here are verified. They have to be jointly verified. Okay, so this is the CQU set instance, and here Marcelo, the lip set. Yes, please. Just a just a quick quick question for clarification. The instance, the P set instances, as all formulas that have independent probabilities. No, I I don't consider independence at all. I mean, they are. There is a big mess of formulas there. I I'm not saying. Uh, uh, one formula is independent from the other. They may all be dependent. Uh, if you add uh, independence uh, constraints, first you cannot ac ac axiomatize that, uh, but that's not a problem. Uh, second, you 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 increase the complexity from uh, NP to P space immediately because here we're dealing with this, with sums and and multiplication by by coefficients. But once you have independence, you can start multiplying probabilities. The the complexity increases. So I I thank you for asking me. I should be clear. I'm not making any presupposition of independence between these formulas. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, it's okay. And the same thing here for for the uh, here. What I call C is just the probability in uh, in uh, Lukashevich infinitely valued uh, logic. I call it C because Mundici didn't call it. They say this probability here is just a convex combination and he uses the letter C. So I used his notation to say that the probability of alpha one, which is a formula interpreted in Lukashevich infinitely valued logic with the Lukashevich connectives is equal to Q1 and uh, same thing, K constraints. This is just the Q1, it's just a probability uh, number between zero and one and alpha one and alpha K are just uh, formulas in in propositional uh, L infinity. And Cs are just a uh, notation for uh, probabilities in that setting, that's all. So it's very similar, the setting here. We, uh, we want a model uh, and the probability distribution that satisfies in Lukashevich infinite value this probability constraints. It's the same thing. Okay, so no independence anywhere here. So I'm not talking about independence here. So well, what we do, we, we take a logician point of view and we put the, uh, these sets of formulas or sets of constraints in normal form. So normal forms kind of freeze us to, to think about the problem in, in a convenient way. So we separate the, the, pro the, the, the sets of probabilities. On one hand, we have gamma, which is the set of all formulas that have probability one. So gamma are the formulas that have to be true everywhere. And on the other high side, we have psi, that is a set of probability constraints over atomic formulas only. So here are the, the atomic symbols, the, 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 the propositional letters, not 
pro in the previous uh, case, phi could be any formula. Here we, we, we assign probabilities only to propositional letters and all the rest are formulas that state uh, what must be true at all worlds. And uh, okay, so this is a, 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 a PSAT instance can be put put in this normal form so the original so such that the original problem is probabilistic satisfiable if and only if the normal form is and this normal form can be computed in linear time so it's it's a kind of almost trivial uh, to to write these formulas uh, and same thing here for lipsat it's exactly the same thing here all the the, the formulas gamma which whose probability is 1 in in uh, l infinity and uh, Theta are just probabilities of atomic uh, symbols, uh, atomic uh, propositional symbols. Okay, and here in the CQU sat, uh, the the equivalence is gamma in a normal form are the formulas that are true everywhere. So formulas of the form for everywhere x gamma of x. These formulas may have uh, boolean uh, combinators inside, and here we have cardinality constraints only on atomic formula. So A of X is a, is a predicate in our language, A1 of X, et cetera, et cetera. So we can, and we, all, this, this is valid for all this. We can bring uh, any, any formula to this normal form in linear time. We need to add extra symbols. Yes, we have to, we can do that, but that's all. And once we added a, a small number, linear number of extra symbols, we put the formula in this normal form. And from now on, I only deal with normal form formula. I don't care about the original formulation, only with normal form formula. And this uh, allows us to bring interesting algorithms, uh, deal with all of them. And all these logics, they, they, they have this kind of normal form, okay? And uh, now with this thing, we can write a linear algebraic formulation of this. So we kind of, uh, we are at the intersection between logic and linear algebra. We have a, a result that this normal form probabilistic satisfiability problem is satisfiable, meaning there is a model uh, of possible value, possible worlds with a probability distribution on top of the possible worlds, if and only if, this linear system here has a solution, okay? So the linear system is what? It's a, a matrix A, which may be exponentially large. So it may have exponentially large columns, but ju just K lines, so uh, such that there is a probability distribution pi over uh, uh, all these columns, say also pi has size two to the N, such that well all the pi the pi's are all positive and they adapt to one so this means that pi is a probability distribution and we have the the conditions of probability satisfiable so this is satisfiable if we can find a pi and an a that satisfies this uh, constraints and here a in probabilistic uh, uh, logic, in probabilistic satisfiability, the the elements of A, A, I, J are just zero or and one. So A is a kind of a binary uh, integer matrix. Okay, and here if we move to 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 Lukashevich infinitely valued logic, is the same thing except well. Lambda, it's, it's an exponential. Actually, the, the, the matrix here can be infinite, but well, we don't, suppose it's a only, only exponential. It can always be exponential. Uh, and uh, lambda is the probability distribution all over this uh, exponentially large number of, of uh, uh, Lukashevich valuations. So these are Lukashevich valuations. They are no, no longer 0, 1. There can be any number between 0 and 1 included. So here we have, uh, I'm working only on uh, rational numbers. I don't believe in, in real numbers. The real numbers are, are horrible from, from a computational point of view. So I deal with rational. Sorry? No, no, I was laughing because I agree. I mean, it's <laughs> <laughs> Okay, good. Oh, good. Oh, so this is an echo. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I keep cursing real numbers for my students. They say, oh, this guy's crazy, but uh, you cannot have even numbers, names for the real, for real but uh, forget about it. So let me go back here. So 
the difference here is only that uh, the, the matrix here is more, it's, it, you, you can have coefficients between zero and one. Uh, uh, in, if I, I allowed it to be real, nothing would change. I mean, it would be exactly the same machinery. And here on the, the CQU set, on, on when we have counting quantifiers, what happens is, wow, we don't have the, 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 the coefficients here. They don't add up to one. They just have to be cardinalities. They have to be bigger, bigger than zero numbers, uh, positive numbers, they, and they are all integers. Here, the pi's and uh, the probabilities could be uh, uh, rational numbers, but here the the the, the cardinalities of each uh, I call it each region, but each region represents a possible maximum intersection of all these sets. Here, the, what we have here is a bunch of sets intersecting, and the the maximal intersection we can only put a natural number there, meaning a cardinality, a number of elements that we put in, to that maximum intersection. And uh, of course, this can, has to be an in integer. So here is a linear integer program. Uh, we don't have, need to add up anything, but all the, the other conditions are the same. And matrix A uh, uh, is also 0, 1, meaning which of these maximum intersections, uh, which of these sets that we have belong to the mass, ma maximum intersection or not. So that's that's the, the view of it. Uh, and so the, we, we have this uh, formulation in linear algebraic terms, but the linear algebraic elements, the matrices and the vectors, these two vectors here, they may be exponentially large. Oh, and here it can be even infinite, but forget about that. Uh, so what we do with exponentially large things? Well, we say, well, we don't need exponentially large. They all have small solutions. So if this thing is satisfiable, if there is a solution here for this problem or for this problem and for this problem, we can show that there is a small solution. What do you mean by small? I mean that I only give non-zero probability to at most k plus one element. So if there is a solution, there is a, a solution that only gives probability to a, a, a small number. So if I have a K restrictions, K probability restrictions, I can give uh, non-zero probability for to at most K plus one, Y plus one, because I have this equation here that makes, that tells me that, that they all add up to one. So this forces the plus one there. And the same, absolutely the same kind of reasoning here to show that if there is a solution to the to the satisfiability of probabilistic uh, Lukashevich uh, logic, then there is a solution with that, that gives non-zero probability to at, at most k plus one uh, Lukashevich uh, possible worlds. And here we don't we only have at most k because we don't have the plus one. So here there is a solution with at most k. Uh, At most k, no. Ah, this is integer linear programming. It's not at most k. It's uh, it's also polynomial. It's uh, five halves of k n log n. Well, forget it. it's polynomial here. This is false. It's not at most k. Uh, we need more than 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 that. We have of the order of k uh, k log k. So it's five halves k log k, that's the result. So this, this is, it's still polynomial, but the, 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 the statement here is false. Sorry, I should have, I should correct that in my slides. Anyway, because we always, whenever we have a solution, we have a small solution, all these problems are NP, are in NP, okay? Why are in NP? Because I can guess the solution. I can guess the small solution and verify it in polynomial time that uh, I do this mu multiplication here and it's fine because I have only uh, small matrices and small number of elements that I have to pay attention. This can be doing, done in polynomial time, actually can be done in cubic time. If I'm not here, here the same thing, it's a bit, larger the, the, the polynomial and same thing here. So we have can guess a solution and this is the NP guess. The, these problems are all in NP. On the other hand, these problems are all 
uh, NP hard. Why? Because if I give all the probabilities one here, I just have a, a, a such pro problem. I, I want to, to verify a set of uh, the satisfiability of a set of formulas, all formulas. Something happened. Marcelo? Marcelo, you there? We lost you. I mean, we lost, we lost your, uh, your sound. I'll send him uh, a text. Oh, which becomes... Uh, oh, Marcelo, you're back. Marcelo, okay. Marcelo. We, yeah. missed, we missed the last uh, 30 seconds, I would say, because okay. you disappeared. I disappeared? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, as I'm only seeing the presentation, I, I'm not uh, taking care. But anyway, did you hear that I said that this this uh, limit is, is wrong? wrong? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That we have. Yes. Polynomial, but incorrect. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's of the order of k log k. Yes, we okay. heard. Okay. So, uh, and I said because of this result that we have, if we have a solution, we have a solution with at most uh, a polynomial number of of non-zero elements, all these problems are in NP because we can guess uh, these matrices and, and the solution. And in polynomial time, we can verify that this, uh, th that th what we guess is actually a solution. So we can verify that this is a solution to our problem in polynomial same, time. Sure. So, and the same thing here and the same thing here. So, it's it's polynomial time verifiable if we guess. So these are all problems in NP, and of course these problems can be all reduced to SAT. If I make the probabilities all one, I have a set of formula that I want to satisfy all the time. This is just SAT. So these problems are easily shown to be uh, NP hard, and because of these small solution properties, they are in NP, and that means that we have approved for all of these problems that they are all NP complete. Okay, they are NP complete, but this one is simpler than the other two, and a SAT is simpler than the other than because of this internal structure of the of the NP class. Uh, so, so, so all problems are NP complete, uh, and this is this is kind of the reasoning we do to prove that. And the small solution, thanks to the, the small solution. Uh, arises from a linear algebraic property knows, known as the Cara Theodori lemma. Cara Theodori shows that uh, exactly that. You, it con constructively shows that we, if we have a, a solution here, we can uh, attribute zero to to a a, a column, so uh, to an element of pi here in a constructive way, uh, provided that there are at, at most k plus one restrictions which are have probability bigger than zero and constructively we can transform a solution exponentially large solution into one that has at most k plus one elements same here same here same here is much more complicated to show that here is uh, dealing with the integers is harder than dealing with the rational numbers but uh, and this is the best known uh uh lower bound is uh O of k log log k, but this can all be done, uh, and it and it's done in the linear algebraic side. So we bring this to the to logic, saying we have a small model. Uh, so we have implemented that uh, we have uh, a probabilistic sat solver, a CQ sat solver, and a lip sat solver. They are all implemented and available on the internet. Here we use linear programming. Here we have integer linear programming. Here we have integer linear programming too. Okay, integer linear programming is harder than linear programming. Um, you know, all know that uh, integer linear programming is is NP complete, whereas uh, uh, linear programming is polynomial using uh, in, internal point method. Uh, and here, how do we do? We we all the time we work only with the small number, k plus one number of columns that we generate. And 
uh, at each, we, we do a, a of an optimization, an interactive optimization every time we use logic or a SAT solver to generate a new column that respects some restrictions. And uh, we, we use a SAT solver to generate this column, we substitute one column, put it back, and do it in a way that the uh, the the cost of the of the optimization problem always decreases and when we reach cost zero we have so shown that the problem has a solution and when we 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 reached a, a limit point that we cannot go uh, cannot decrease it and it's still positive then we know for sure there is a theorem that shows that uh, the problem is such is is probabilistically unsatisfiable so uh, and and when we implement this, we have a phase transition. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to explain later what phase transition means. Same thing here with linear engineering programming. Here appears to be the same thing as there, but the column generation is not a SAT solver. We need a, an L infinity solver. And to build an L infinity solvers, there are many ways. And the best way we, we, we've done it is to use mixed integer programming. So we have to use integer linear programming with usual linear programming to, so, to, 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 buy, to build the solver. But it's exactly the same thing. We, we, we generate columns on the fly as we need it uh, until we either satisfy it or you can proceed no longer. And we prove that this actually shows that the original problem is unsolvable, it's unsatisfiable. Okay, so we have Marcelo, solutions for all. Uh, yes. One one quick clarification. How please what is it what is it that uh, makes you at some point decide it's worthless producing another column or you can't produce a column at all? What what is the what is that condition? Yeah. Because I Thank missed you, that bit of information. It's the second case. We what we do uh, um when we, we, we generate in columns, we have a a condition, a linear algebraic condition, um, as, uh, as saying this is a a cost reduction condition. Okay, and this cost reduction condition is nothing but an inequality. And inequalities, even in over over integer or rational coefficients, can be transformed into a SAT formula. And we want to have a a, a SAT formula that both satisfies the inequality and satisfies this gamma here, the thing that must be true at all the, at, at the same time. So whenever we try to generate a column and we can't, like there is no, no column that satisfies gamma, that must be satisfied at all time, and this cost reduction con condition of linear, linear algebra, in that case, we know there are no con no columns that can be generation, and the problem is unsatisfiable. Uh, was I clear? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Thanks. So uh, we use th uh, this is the, the point that uh, a linear algebra meets uh, logic. Uh, uh, that's when we, we we combine the two of them. Most uh, uh, that's the, the the coupling of the two things happens at this exact point. And if we have a column that generated by logic, we substitute it in the process and keeps going. We keep going on until either uh, uh, solve the optimization problem or we cannot proceed anymore. And we prove that this means that the original problem is unsatisfiable. The, and this happens in all three cases. It's the same machinery, the same idea repeated. Of course, here we use the integer linear prog programming and here we use a different tool to generate the columns. But the idea is the same in all cases. It's the same uh, basic machinery. You just have to substitute the parts. And that's why I call it this a research program because it's the same thing basically we're doing. Uh, but I, I didn't know that from when I started doing this. Uh, so it, it became clear that we can use the same machinery to solve all these problems. Okay, so uh, the future, recent and ongoing, well, we, we try to apply this to probabilistic relation logics very hard. The, the only relational logic that we can do this is just without blowing up the, the complexity immediately is description logics. And if we try to do this to uh, probabilistic, uh, sorry, uh, the description logics which are polynomial time solvable like EL, 
or, or uh, uh, VL light. And then when we add probabilities, the thing becomes only NP. So cardinality description logics, oh, it's a nightmare. Uh, cardinalities are harder. Um, and we're trying to, oops, find out uh, what kind of description logics we can add the cardinality constraints and becomes only NP. It, it seems that uh, EL is all one of them. Uh, and but we, we now have tractable probabilistic description logics, but we have to weaken the descrip description logics. Um, uh, I'm working on this now. Uh, it seems that we can, uh, uh, EL is too strong to obtain tractability. We need something weaker. And uh, um, I'm working on this at the very moment. And, uh, but this thing using, uh, uh, studying uh, Lukashevich uh, infinite divided logics has opened a new world for me. And uh, there is a result there that uh, uh, Lukashevich infinite divided logic can represent any piecewise linear function which has integer coefficients. And I am uh, working now, we have shown actually, this is also ongoing, we can do something and represent not only piecewise linear functions, but also rational piecewise linear functions um, using a different, uh, Mundici has done that with the, with the, a stronger logic. We, we are using now Lukashevich infinite valued logic mod sat, and that we have shown that can represent also rational piecewise linear function and it without increasing the, the complexity of the logic too much. And uh, once we can represent any piecewise linear function, we can approximate any continuous function. And in particular, the kind of continuous function that we want to approximate are called neural networks. So the dream here is to be able to reason about uh, linear uh, uh, neural networks by approximating these neural networks with uh, rational piecewise linear function, obtaining a formula in uh, Lukashevich infinite divided logic mod sat. I have to explain what the mod sat is, but uh, this this is correct. And then we can use the machinery for Lukashevich to reason about uh, continuous function. And uh, once I, I I had this idea, I thought, oh brilliant idea. Is it the case that no one thought about this before? And uh, well, the good thing about finding someone that found the same, that had the same idea as you is, uh, well, you're not so crazy. Someone had the same idea as well. So this idea was put forward by two Italians, Amato and uh, forgot the, the, the other guy's name, in a paper by in 2000. But instead of using this Lukashevich infinity value uh, logic mod sat, they had a much, much, much more complex logic. It's the L pi half, which uh, Luis Godo is one of the proposers of, of, of that logic. But that, that logic can represent uh, all polynomial equations and piecewise polynomial equations. And uh, if piecewise linear logic is already a nightmare, imagine if you can represent all polynomials, even those that do not have a finite uh, representation using uh, Galois correspondence. So that logic is, is really awful. And we have a more, much well-behaved, uh, more, um, more, uh, tract, uh, more approachable logic to deal with that. Uh, and uh, we haven't, uh, we, we haven't uh, uh, written about any neural network so far, but we hope to do that in the future. We need machinery that, that can, be, can deal with hundreds of coefficients because that's what a very small neural network has these days. There's a very stupid, very small neural network deals with the hundreds and you know, thousands of coefficients. Uh, and uh, we have to be able to deal with that kind of, of reasoning uh, here before we, we can try to reason about uh, neural networks using this kind of, of things. Anyway, that was all I had to plan for today, this is exactly one hour. I have a few extra slides to talk about 
publicistic, uh, but uh, well, I'd like to thank you very much. If you want have questions, if you want to hear more, I can talk until tonight. Uh, tonight here is much uh, longer than you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, okay. thank you very much. And these are the the the, the locations of the implementations. Uh, you are philosophers; you don't care about implementations, but well, they are there, and oh, you should we do. care about. We are uh, care about We are philosophers who care about implementation. Oh, oh, that's music to my ears. Fantastic. <laughs> Thanks, Marcelo. So. Thank you. So if you have any questions, you've, you've done very good questions. I mean, they're all very much at the spot. Uh, uh, of course, I, I gave a bird's eye presentation. To understand really what's happening, we have to prove all the theorems to, to understand how Carl Theodori is ap applicable and why it brings small, small uh, models to the problem and, and how this small model property can be used to they be explored to build an algorithm with column generation. But uh, yeah, well, at least now you have a, a bird's eye view if you want to. Uh, we have uh, many papers on, on this here. Uh, I have the, the papers. Well, where are the papers? Blah, 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 blah. No, no, no. I, th I, I thought I had the papers published. Oh, yes. It's uh, only for the probabilistic uh, point of view. We had a paper in each guy 2011, uh, SAT 2013. Uh, we have a, an AI journal paper based on uh, on measuring the degrees of inconsistency. And uh, we also have a paper comparing several approaches in the annals of mathematics in artificial intelligence. We have extensions of this logic in the this is the Brazilian Journal of Computer Science. Uh, that's just for the, the probabilistic set. For the, uh, for the Lukashevich, uh, probabilistic Lukashevich uh, thing, we published uh, uh, in, in each car, International Joint Conference on Arti uh, Automated Reasoning 2018, the joint conference. And we have uh, just now, a, a problem in the jo uh, a journal version of it in the journal of of automated reasoning uh, it has just been approved uh, it's i think it's available for download uh, the electronic version and the 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 counting problem presented in in triple ai in 2000 uh, 2016 and we are trying to apply that to to EL with the uh, Franz Bader, Franz Bader's group in 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 Dresden. So we're working together there also. So there is lots of ongoing things, and uh, also we, we try we, we plan to apply logic to neural networks. I think that's crazy, but. Uh, uh, well, that's the kind of thing that makes life interesting. Anyway. Is there any anyone else who wants to ask any question? I'm getting out of this thing. I'll, I'll have a look at you. Uh, I'll stop sharing if you want. Just uh, so I can see you all. <laughs> Marcelo, um, yep. I wanted to ask you actually, I have, uh, well, I would like to, to know something more about phase, phase transition. That, ah. uh, you know that I'm interested in that, uh, okay. in so. that although I never worked on it. But, uh, and the other question, I, I, I tell you in advance, so, you know, the other question would be, I mean, um, you are building on, on, on SAT, basically, and, and developing things. Yes. And uh, apply the two, um, to normal, to standard deterministic matrices, right? Have you uh, tried to think uh, about how this could extend to logics which are defined by non-deterministic matrices in the sense of Avron? Uh, uh, no, no, this is, uh, I don't know what a, a, a well-founded probabilistic uh, uh, theory would be for this kind of matrices. I can think of, other non-Lukashevich uh, multivided logics. Uh, can you can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
that's that's more that's easier to imagine how you would move these things i don't know how we could deal with the uh, with mm, with it, that kind of matrices i would have to look at the definition and and see if we can apply the same machinery of column generation it may be the case but it may we may be hiding a a a, a, a an exponential blow up in the size, uh, which I, I I wouldn't know how to do. I ha I have to look at details. Okay, yeah, so okay. It's, maybe one day yeah. we can. Uh, yeah, we can yeah, we that. could do that, but the, the the complexity may not be as well behaved as as in these cases. But you mentioned you mentioned uh, you mentioned phase transition, uh, yeah. and phase transition actually is the reason why I started all this uh, research program because. Uh, we had a student that had implemented uh, a PSAT using uh, linear algebra only. And his implementation didn't have a phase transition. It was an implementation that the more restriction you added, uh, the bigger it, it grew exponentially. Uh, so it didn't have phase transition. Uh, and I was actually in uh, in uh, judging that uh, work, and I said, "Well, that's very odd. Why he doesn't have? Because it's there is a conjecture that every NP complete problem uh, has a phase transition. Okay, so this is an open conjecture, and it's a it's a phase transition problem is an empirical." Uh, property no one has proved it must have. actually there are let let i be clear there is two uh, in physics when you talk about phase transition like from from uh, liquid to to gas okay or from solid to liquid there are two sorts of phase transition the, the first order phase transition and the second order phase transition I'm interested in the second order phase transition. The first order phase transition is easy to to prove that you must have it. So, uh, in SAT, when you you have say you have three SAT, so the more and you have you fix a number n of of uh, variables. Okay, so if you have very a uh, small number of 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 uh, uh, clauses over n so you have uh, you have n is a hundred okay and you have only 10 clauses three with with, with three clauses with, with three literals each so basically you have uh, a lot of uh, have uh, a lot of variables with very few restrictions on them so this gives us the idea that basically everything you can guess will satisfy the the, the, the whole set of formulas yeah it's so true. you're your, your your formula will be will be uh, satisfiable uh, almost all the time only you have very nasty conditions but you have to to trick around so if you have them uh, taken randomly this will be a very be satisfiable yes. yeah how so, about, you know how about uh, and if you had uh, say we have 1000 uh, uh, we have 1,000 uh, uh, clauses now over the same hundred uh, variables. Now we have a very tight problem. I mean, you cannot uh, satisfy it, so it will be almost uh, always unsatisfiable. And and there is a, a transition between this almost uh, always satisfiable to almost uh, always unsatisfiable. This is it's called the first order phase transition, and this is. Well, this is very simple to show you. I just gave you a, a, a hand waving explanation, but uh, but you you can do it uh, with probabilities and show yes, this is this is always the case. The, the hard part is the second uh, is is the second order phase transition, which, which tells me the the following. Okay, I have a phase transition, and uh, but the time I I. I it takes for me to solve a SAT problem, it increases almost exponentially until you reach 50% uh, satisfiability. So when half of the problems that you guess, you, you randomly propose are satisfiable uh, and half are unsatisfiable, this is kind of the, 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 
the the highest uh, takes the highest time to solve and then again when start problems start becoming more and more unsatisfiable you can reach a decision quicker so this this, this is kind of the, the the derivative of the first order uh, satisfiability it's 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 what i call the second order satisfiability which is the time it takes to solve the problem it gets to a peak at 50 percent satisfiability and then it decreases exponentially again to the other side that's that's uh, only empirical no one has proven that all the all the i know of one uh, one uh, proof but uh, it, it 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 messes all the mathematics at the end to, to reach the result so it it is a large book by uh, 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 two physicists uh, mezar and i forgot his the, the the other guy's name and uh, he he goes on very well very well and then he he put some funny assumptions there i don't know where he he got that and to to show the that phase transition exists but uh well not very mathematically solid For a phys physicists they don't care if the mathematics is not good or they don't care they got the, the result uh, uh they there are lots of yeah, and they are happy with that but the uh, mathematicians and logicians they are not uh, that flexible <laughs> thank you and and, and oh, oh sorry and then I'll, I'll finish the story because the students didn't have a phase transition i started looking into this uh, algorithms to solve this uh, probabilistic logic and i and and when i saw the 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 the, the data the graphic and i saw the phase transition then I, I was it was at this moment of explosion of happiness yes yeah i was right i i i i thought we could have a phase transition for probabilistic satisfiability and i found it and uh, my student found it actually but <laughs> uh, but and and then for all these implementations i only i am I, I only happy with the implementation once i have shown that they have a phase transition so for all this uh, this implementations i have a phase transition for psat for cqu sat and for lipsat they all have phase transitions great very interesting thank you any anyone else questions so i Marcella, must admit hi paolo go uh, or you okay so uh, my question is you have this um PSAT problem and if you consider generalization of the PSAT problem like when you have uh, linear inequalities involving probabilities i guess linear inequalities are just the same problem it's they don't the have any complexity no they yeah, are the empty complexity is the same i wonder if there is any change from the point of view of the implementation it's exactly it's the same. only uh, we deal with that in linear inequalities on uh, when we build the the, the normal form okay if okay. you start with inequalities you end up with the with the uh, normal form with equalities and it's just the same problem i mean okay. no change at all in the way to solve it okay okay, okay. And, uh, thank you for your question a small remark was uh, I think there is some work by Antonio Di Nola in Salerno relating Lukasiewicz logic and uh, neural networks. I ah, to... really? Oh, what, what's his name? Uh, Antonio Di Nola, professor um, in the University of Salerno. Di Nola is a mathematician. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good, good to know because I have a student finishing his PhD exactly on that. So I'll point that uh, reference to him. Yeah, uh, okay. we do some internet search. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So if there are no other questions, then I think we can uh, thank Marcelo for uh sharing with us uh is is well it's well ongoing project now it's it's not just it's not just a program research program it's uh it's very it's very well ongoing so uh thanks marcelo for coming we thank you looking thank forward you. to having you physically in milan at some point oh well, i i'm looking for i even more than you can imagine yeah, <laughs> you, are, you, are, you are supposed to come visiting us for a while yeah then, yeah of course uh, but anyway, I will bother you uh, maybe in the next few weeks uh, when we're finished with teaching because I would like to talk to you about this stuff. Uh, it's very interesting. Thank you very much indeed.
thank you. I'm I'm all available. Uh, I'm I'm working from home. Uh, I uh, I'm head of department actually, and uh, we're discussing probably the second semester because uh, uh, probably we will still be working at least partly remotely. So uh, I'm I'll be here. So whenever you if you want to find me, you know where to find me now. <laughs> yeah, sure, of course. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Thanks, Marcelo. Bye, bye guys. Yeah, bye, bye, bye. Thank everyone. You. It was a big pleasure. And if you have any questions and want to ask me anytime, I'm available on email, sure, WhatsApp, sure. whatever. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Thank All you. The best to everybody then. Thank you very much. Thanks. And bye, everyone. Thanks for attending. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Bye bye. -bye.